top spins clockwise or counterclockwise. Everyone understands clockwise and counterclockwise spin. However, this is not what the quantum mathematicians mean when they say that a subatomic particle spins. In the religion of quantum mechanics, spin is a static concept. The mathematicians talk about spin direction, orientation, and alignment. About spin up and spin down. In quantum, spin is like making a mark on a top. If a mathematician detects the mark with an instrument and realizes that it is pointing in a given direction, he arbitrarily labels this particle as having spin 1. If the mark is oriented in the opposite direction, he may call it spin minus 1. And if he finds the mark in some intermediate position, he may call it spin 3 halves, or spin minus half. This is as close as you get to figuring out what quantum means by spin. But if you really want to get the scoop on spin, the best course is to consult a quantum expert. Nuclear physicist Tim Mooney gives us a scholarly version of spin to remove any remaining doubts. Yeah, nobody knows what spin is. It is an attribute of an elementary particle. Some quantum mathematicians will attempt to con you into accepting that spin is like angular momentum. You know, rational, top-like, clockwise or counterclockwise spin. However, the experts at the Wikipedia summarily brush aside such stealthy deceptions. Spins have some peculiar properties that distinguish them from their orbital angular momenta. I say angular momenta. Pay attention, boy, I'm talking to you. Spin quantum numbers may take on half integer values. Listen here, boy. The spin of a charged particle is associated with a magnetic, I say magnetic, dipole moment, with a g-factor differing from 1. This is incompatible with classical physics, which assumes that the charge and mass of the particle are distributed. Therefore, the quantum mathematicians have no idea what they're talking about when they invoke spin. They just use this parameter and prod right on as if nothing. But if a mathematician insists that spin is like angular momentum, he won't mind if we use traditional clockwise and counterclockwise spin like that of a top to explain EPR. So what is EPR? Assume that an atom emits two discrete photon particles in opposite directions. The mathematicians have theorized and the experimentalists have verified that while one spins clockwise, the other one spins counterclockwise. If we reverse the spin of one of the particles with a device, the other one instantly reverses spin as well. But how is this possible if the particles are miles apart? How did one particle communicate to the other at speeds faster than light that it had to reverse its spin? The quantum mathematicians have come up with amusing explanations for EPR over the years, which, quite frankly, are fit for children's television programs. David Baum tells us that hidden variables, evil ghosts and goblins lurk in the dark corners of space. These mean spirits have the sole purpose of tinkering with quantum experiments. Ha <laughs> ha! Two photons are given off simultaneously with opposite momentum. Each photon is excited in a direction orthogonal to the other. There's some hidden interaction, ha <laughs> ha, between B and A, or between B and the measuring apparatus that explains the above behavior. Hugh Everett proposed instead that every human action forks out indefinitely like a chain reaction into countless universes. Science writer Peter Byrne summarizes Everett's breathtaking scientific discovery. Universal wave function would contain branches. Each branch has own copy of observer. In one branch, person perceives the electron is at A. In nearly identical branch, copy of person perceives same electron is at B. Each copy of person sees chance as cooking up one reality from menu of physical possibilities. In full reality, every alternative on menu happens. How branches become independent is known as decoherence theory. It is accepted part of standard modern quantum theory. Um, nom, 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 nom. Two celebrities of mathematical physics 
John Wheeler and Richard Feynman allege that particles arrive from the future, or alternatively, that one particle or wave in the experiment is retarded with respect to the other. The experts at the Wikipedia summarize the Wheeler-Feynman retarded theory. Oh, yuck. The wave of the first solution will arrive after the emission. The second one will arrive before the emission. The second wave appears to be clearly unphysical, as it means we can see the effect of any phenomenon before it happens. Oh, yuck. <laughs> A champion of this retarded theory, John Kramer, uses it to explain EPR. And remember, kids, the measurement event M1 occurs earlier in time sequence than does event M2. The measurement alters our knowledge of the system. Later, when measurement M2 is made, the system is already in a definite super de duper quantum mechanical state. Determined by the result of M1. Therefore, measurement M2 produces no further state vector collapse because the knowledge gained is redundant. I love you. It is scary to realize that all these individuals went to a university and somehow managed to obtain PhDs. Even scarier, it makes you wonder how such rubbish made it into print at respectable journals and publishers. How is it that this Hollywood-esque, many worlds and back from the future poppycock slipped through the peer reviewers and editors? Under the rope hypothesis, EPR has a very simple, rational explanation. Unlike in the religion of quantum, the atom does not emit one-way photon particles. Rather, all atoms in the universe are interconnected via electromagnetic ropes. Light is merely the torsion of an electromagnetic rope. From one end, the rope spins clockwise. From the other, it has no choice but to spin counterclockwise. We're done. Here we have a rope. From my end, the rope spins clockwise. From your end, the rope had better be spinning counterclockwise. If I reverse the spin on the rope, my end now spins counterclockwise. Your end had better be spinning clockwise. We cannot explain instantaneous action at a distance rationally with discrete particles. The particle hypothesis is, how can we say this politely? entirely bunk. Physics is simple. Physics is not half as complicated and as surrealistic as the mathematicians have led you to believe it is. Mother Nature never went to school. She doesn't understand the equations and numbers. And she certainly doesn't recognize hidden spirits, other universes, or, God forbid, particles or waves returning from the future. She only understands clockwise and counterclockwise spin. The rope explains both the mysterious phenomenon known as spin and magical action at a distance. Mm -hmm.